Welcome to Garage Gym Athlete Ask Me Anything. It's pretty simple. I'll be answering questions from the thousands of athletes that follow our daily programming. If you have a question or topic you want submitted, go to garagegymathlete.com slash AMA. Let's get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. This is Ask Me Anything. Me and Joe are back. I like doing it this way. Maybe it's just the new norm. I don't know. It worked, it worked well the first time. Yeah, it was great. And if you were watching, you got to see like all the crazy contrasts, which probably still not fixed. I think it's changing as we speak. Uh, you, have to, you have to watch YouTube to know what we're talking about. But if you're listening, thank you for listening. We're going to get into this week's uh, question of the week. And it's actually from Trampus. And so let me uh, pull it up. Pros and cons of low bar versus high bar back squat. He said, I know your preference is high bar because of safety, but with spotter arm slash safety equipment, is there anything wrong with the low bar? Anything else to consider? There is a lot more to consider. Uh, my, my predominant reason for always wanting to go high bar isn't just safety. I don't know if it's necessarily that much safer. You can bail easily on high bar. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about some of the, some of the more considerations uh, let's get our opinions out of the way first. So you can go, then I'll go on opinions, just our opinions of high bar versus low bar. And then I'll read uh, some of the, the studies around it because the studies aren't even going to say one's better than the other. It's just they're used for different things. And I think I could explain that, uh, you know, from more of a scientific standpoint. But uh, Joe, what's your opinion of high bar versus low bar? I don't have one strong opinion one way or the other, but I do prefer high bar. I think it is the traditional, I mean, when I think of back squat, that's, that's what I think of. And to me, low bar is a deviation of the traditional high bar back squat, just like a uh, sumo deadlift is a deviation from traditional deadlift. So I prefer high bar. I think it's when, when I think of squatting and picking things up, I think of high bar cause you're going to be keeping your, your chest up, your torso up versus kind of more bent over. Yeah. And, uh, for anyone listening who doesn't really know the difference between high bar and low bar. So high bar back squat, is as it sounds like you the, the bar is much higher on your back like up in into the uh i say much but we're talking about a couple inches here in all honesty it's just higher on your back up on your traps but the actual stance and setup is a little bit different because you're going to typically take a pretty narrow stance with high bar back squat or a narrower stance with high bar back squat and like you said you're going to keep a very upright torso so low bar back squat you have the bar a little bit lower on your back and you will typically have a wider stance and more of a forward lean. So you're going to be leaning forward uh, to, to, to me, and this gets into my opinion of it, to kind of cheat some of the distance. Because I feel like the reason I'm not a huge fan of a low bar back squat is because it's like, like powerlifting in general. Powerlifting, the sport, the the only thing that matters is how much weight is moved. It doesn't matter. It really no, nothing else matters. I mean, that's why they wear shirts and, and uh, knee sleeves and all these other things, right? Or knee wraps or in these full compression suits and everything, because whatever they can do to move the weight. So if you are a power lifter, you might want to, I mean, most of them do low bar, all of them do low bar back squat, but that forward lean motion, I feel like it's almost two different things is like you are, you're squatting down to some degree and then it's like you can't squat down any further because your hips are so, uh, your stance is so wide. So you kind of lean the rest of you the depth. And mm -hmm. then you kind of do that in reverse. It looks pretty good. Uh, but that's, that's a big reason I don't like it. I feel like you're kind of cheating the lift. And I feel like you could get the same stimulus in other ways. And now with um, high bar back squat, I just feel like it's a little bit more athletic because when you go to jump, you know, when you run and you like, take a couple of steps and you're about to jump and you're going to go as high as you can. You're not taking this really wide stance. You know what I mean? Like if, mm -hmm. if you're going to try and jump as high as you can touch a, a spot on the wall, you're not going to widen your feet as wide as you can and be like, yeah, let me try and jump. You're going to put your feet really narrow, like really close together and then jump up. And so I feel like jumping is just a little bit more explosive in nature. And that's kind of what the, the research agrees, uh, re agrees with. And I'll get into that, but anything from what I said, um, you want to hit on Joe? Yeah. So in regards to the, the being bent over more. So one thing that I, I was looking up some videos and the more I thought about it, if you, if you take the, the high, the low bar back squat and where 
the position that you're in when you're toward the bottom of the back squat, you're not going all the way to the full, to full depth at the bottom, but also if you look at it from the side view, it's basically the same as your deadlift setup. So you're almost working the same thing as your deadlift, but if we're already deadlifting, then why would we need to do that again? So, cause it, cause it gets more of the posterior chain. Yeah. And, and I mentioned a uh, power lifter just wanting to lift more. You, you will lift more on a low bar back squat. Like that you will, you just plain and simple. You lift more on a low bar back squat, especially after you get good at it. Uh, but there are pros and cons to each one. So let me get into the, uh, there are two different studies. Um, I'm, I don't normally like to do this, but I'm not going to read an entire study here. So I'm just going to get to the conclusion part. I do think you guys should go kind of dissect these studies if you want to. I have two different ones pulled up. One is um, from 2019, July 2019. It's called the high bar and low bar back squats, a biomechanical analysis. And then there's another one from 1996. So going real wide range here, high and low bar uh, squatting techniques during weight training. And so going back to that first one, I mentioned kind of getting to the uh, conclusion. Let's see, our findings suggest that practitioners seeking to place emphasis on the stronger hip musculature should consider the low bar back squat. Also, when the goal is to lift the greatest load possible, the low bar back squat may be preferable. Conversely, the high bar back squat is more suited to replicate movements that exhibit a more upright torso position, such as the snatch and clean, or to place more emphasis on the associated musculature of the knee joint. So they're almost different, right? Like if you want to just break it down into all the biomechanics there, if you really want to really strengthen your hips and you feel like you have weak hips, then you probably want to get a low bar back squat because of the, the way you get out of a low bar back squat is a significant hip thrust forward, which is a pretty athletic movement, but it feels weird when you have a wide stance. And then if you want to build more of your quadriceps and, you know, get lower for that mobility, then uh, high bar back squat would be better. And then the other study, um, weightlifters. So when I say weightlifter, that is an Olympic weightlifter, snatch and clean and jerk. Powerlifter is the three, you know, bench squat, dead, deadlift. So weightlifters had the load more equally distributed between hip and knee, whereas the powerlifters put relatively more load on the hip joint. The thigh muscular activity was slightly higher for the powerlifters. So it, it, there you're hitting different muscle groups. So to your point, Joe, like they're just different lifts and they work different muscles and they are different, you know, like big, big surprise. But I think uh, you, if we talk about things being transferable, I just feel personally that the high bar back squat is a little bit more uh can be translated to other movements to more movements than specifically a uh, low bar back squat but having really strong hips there's nothing wrong with that so like there's there's nothing wrong with it at all and so when we say back squat in our programming if you would like to experiment with some low bar back squat go for it you know we don't we 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 recommend high bar back squat most of the time but if you're like, Hey, I want to do this cycle, low bar back squat. There's no problem with that whatsoever. You'll, you'll end up with, you know, probably some stronger hips. It'll, I don't think you'll initially lift more weight. I think you have to get pretty good at the form if it's new for you. And then you will be able to lift more weight. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's kind of like the trap bar. You can just move more weight with a trap bar, but it's, uh, it's a different thing, right? It's a different movement. Yeah. Uh, a couple other last minute things. Uh, the high bar will require a bit more mobility. Um, your ankle mobility, your, your knee has to come forward further. So if you have really, really, really tight ankles, low bar might be an option, but you should still work on uh, upping that mobility some. And, but at the same time, to me at least, low bar, you're going to have to have more mobile shoulders because the bar is going to be lower. So you have to wrap your arms around it more to get, to get the weight on your delt. And to me, sometimes I had issues with the wrapping my arm around um, making sure it's pinned to my back because it's not just sitting on your back. You actually have to pin it to your back to keep it in place because it's not on your traps. So there's two other things to, to note and consider. Yeah. And I mean, I'm people who listen to the podcast know I'm just not a huge fan of powerlifting in general. I think it's awesome what those guys can do, how much they can lift and you know, all that's really impressive, but outside of how much weight is on a bar, uh, typically not super impressed. Otherwise not super impressed with the health mobility, anything else in the powerlifting world. And that's why I kind of don't, 
uh, want to mimic things. So you're talking about mobility. Um, yeah, I, when I think mobility, when I think of Olympic weightlifter, I think ridiculous mobility, you know, yeah. but when I think of power lifter, tying shoes might be a difficult challenge, <laughs> you know? And so that's, that's kind of uh, my thoughts on it. And, uh, yeah, I, I want the mobility, but if you uh, are, do have weak hips or you're not as explosive, as you want to be consider that low bar back squat for a cycle or maybe for a few weeks and, and add it to the routine. Yep. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube and thanks for listening. If you're uh, listening to the podcast, podcast listeners, five-star review and positive comment goes a long way. We'd really appreciate it. Everyone watching on YouTube, if you want to let us know your thoughts, uh, add a comment, like this video, subscribe to the channel because we're uh, putting out new content all the time. And if you do have a question that you want to ask, go to garagedomathlete.com slash AMA, join the conversation, ask a question, and we will dive into it deeper. Other than that, guys, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's Ask Me Anything episode. So one more time, if you want to submit a question, topic, or idea, you can do so at garagegymathlete.com slash AMA. And hey, while you're there, if you haven't already, sign up for Garage Gym Athlete membership. We are the best community and programming on the internet. I dare you to try and prove me wrong.